So, so Peter Littlehall, this is one of his problems that he uh, showed me. Uh, three big ideas, good tasks, random groups, vertical non-permanent services. Uh, the thing about new vertical non-permanent services is like, uh, it really does, he has a, a paper called The Thinking Classroom, and uh, he has nine big ideas. I'm really introducing you to three of them today. Uh, leveling is one of the other ideas that I just did. But uh, one of the things I like, I only give out one pen per group for sure, because if you give out more than one pen, you're all going to write. If you feel like and the other thing is that um, uh, I like to, one of the things I have to do sometimes early in my course is, if it's your idea, you can't write down. So you have to give the pen to someone else and you have to explain to them. Because it just forces the collaboration because sometimes we get kids who don't want to do it all and they just do it all and they don't say a word to the other two kids. So that forces it a little bit. But I'll be honest with you, once you get the collaborative environment in your class, it sends a, it starts to not be an issue. Three types of questions. Uh, questions that stop thinking, continue thinking, or because you're in proximity. And only answer the middle ones. When the kid says, oh, is this right? Don't say yes, right? Your third doctor, stop it. Right. Sorry, I'm confused. You keep saying leveling. Yeah. So I leveled the class. I, I, I did some instruction there at the end about um, so you brought uh, everyone what, your, speed what your first move was. Oh, but okay. I leveled to the bottom. Gotcha. Don't level above the bottom. Okay. The highest you're going to talk about is where the, weak, the weakest kids are. So how would you answer the criticism, potentially, that you're teaching to the I'm not. The other kids all. The other kids are all doing all that stuff above them. I'm just not going to level them. I've had my personal conversations with them when they're work, but when I talk to the entire class, I'm not going to talk above them. So the work is rich work that addresses the needs of all, all. but the explanations, the the large group explanations, which are which are very very. There, it's a but it's student center, not my teacher center. Yeah. Sorry, I'm not familiar with defronting. Defronting oh, your room is not having a front of the room. Okay. I'll show you Literally. why. Here's my okay. classroom. Okay. Right? It's whiteboards all the way around, ten pods of three. Do you like threes better than fours? Uh yeah, threes or twos. I find with fours they pair off. Yeah. Or they don't include some of them. Okay. That's just personal preference and lots of people like fours. It's two or three for me. And then I'll just quickly talk about this diagram. So uh, if you're familiar with flow, I don't really remember the book flow. I don't remember the guy's uh, name who wrote it, but uh, that's it. So this, yes, so this balance between skills and uh, challenge. And when Peter like showed me this, I was like, and then I went and bought the book and read it. Because it's like, this is what you want. You want your kids in this like sweet spot for the whole 75 minutes. And like, there's two things that can happen. Their skills can be too, too good for the task. Board or the challenge is too much. Uh, so you got you got choices. So if it, let's say it goes over here, their skills are too good. What are you going to do as a teacher? Yeah, sure. Increase the challenge, right? Or you got to decrease their skill. So how could you decrease their skill? We can take a really strong group and a really weak group and stick them together for a bit. I could steal their best member and put them somewhere else and trade them. I could uh, join the group and play dumb. I could uh, walk by and look at it and go. Walk away and introduce some doubt. <laughs> introduce, introduce some doubt to get them back on task, right? Like whatever it takes to get them in flow so that like maybe there's a bigger problem somewhere else. So I just need like three minutes to get them back on task while I go deal with like a kid that's here. Because this is a bigger problem. Anxiety is a bigger problem than boredom. So I gotta go deal with that group first. This group will just introduce doubt. This group I'll go uh, join their group and give them a hint, right? Increase their skill and then so when he explained all that to me, I was like, wow. Okay, that changes how I'm going to do vertical surfaces in my classroom. Now I have a better idea of like my challenge in the class to keep everybody going for 75 minutes on whatever task it is. And so that's very much what it looks like. And, really helpful. and I really like this diagram too. Like imagine seven groups and three of them go sideways and two of them get there in a roundabout way and two go there directly. And you think of the five practices, I'm gonna, we're going to debrief three of them, right? We'll, we'll talk to someone that went sideways and you guys are going to share it. Why you went sideways? And that will be first. Talk about the uh, roundabout solution and how they got there. 
and then talk about the one that the, the group that did it nice efficiently in a direct manner and then uh, like what is that that's what I used to teach right that's what I used to tell them how to do right and so now that's the punchline at the end of the lesson I'm like just half the kids are going oh I never thought of that and then that's it bye-bye see you tomorrow right it's a different way to teach right um and there's, these are some testimonials that I, I survey my kids at the end of every uh, semester and I you know I take Again, I'll put your attention to the bottom third one. I, I like that I got to one in my kid. And this is all from one kid. Like this is just from one. Wow. Yeah. Pretty uh, uh, pretty powerful stuff about what they liked about it. Uh, they really didn't like not having notes, especially in the for you. So I I um, and I talked to Peter about this and he said we'll give them seven or ten minutes to have a reflective journal. Like so it's not notes anymore, but it's like, oh what I learned today. Today we learned about blah 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 blah. That's, that's okay, like at least they're reflecting on their learning for the day. Um, and then I'm going to make, this is my last slide, and then I'll let you go over a little over time. Uh, so, so, this resonates with me, right? You want, I was teaching for 17 years, and I can remember the moment where I was like writing it on the board, a vector lesson on a Friday afternoon, and they're all in rows copying notes, and it's like coming out of my mouth, and it's going on the board, and I'm not even in the room, right? Like I'm in my car driving in my cottage and there, I can't even ima imagine what it was like for them. And um, I was like, okay, I gotta find a different job in education. I can't keep doing this, because this is dead. And uh, it was either find a new job or make things completely different. And I decided to just turn things on its head. And I just made a massive flip to do things differently and stop making them about me. And, um, I rejuvenated my career and I'll be able to stay in the classroom now until the end of my career because of this. Because, you know, people, a lot of, and I get that not everybody can do that, but I encourage you to change 10% a year. Uh, do 10% differently. And uh, hopefully, hopefully you don't get pulled back down. Because this is what happened to me. I would change something and I just get back into my old self. Right? So by changing it on its head, even if I start pulling back a little bit differently at the end, I'm still going to be, it's still going to be different. I encourage you to uh, jump off the cliff. And even if you just pick one course and do it completely differently and have a little fun with it. Two P two P was a great course for me to do that. Yeah. You all know why. And I've had a lot of success in the that course. I just want to throw it just as a teacher testimony as well. I've done this each day. I just uh, two years ago I was perhaps in many of her shoes. I don't know how many people are, are vertical in the classroom, but I saw Al and I was completely inspired. I was like, oh my gosh, I can do this. And so. Uh, my classroom is totally different now. I have teams that where I've got every surface is vertical, either chalkboard or large four foot by eight foot whiteboards. It's completely changed my practice. I'm a completely different teacher. I am having so much fun in my classroom. I'm completely reinvigorated as well, same as how Alpha. And my students are having so much fun. And you hear comments all the time, oh my gosh, this is the fastest class of the day. Math is my favorite class this year. Like you know, all kinds of crazy comments uh, like that from students all the time. We have a great, a great time uh, every day. And, uh, and I'm telling you, I. I'm so glad that I just decided to, to take the risk and just go and do it. And um, now we've got them in uh, five of our math classrooms are now completely vertical all the way around all four surfaces. And uh, it's just, it's been a huge shift and it's been fantastic. So, so it is doable, I guess, is the best way to it. Please fill out the exit cards. This is my principal's favorite saying. Uh, if not now, then when? And 